Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be seeing if we can get this vintage RFFSA G12 locomotive running again. I picked this locomotive up at a train show ridiculously cheap. It was in a bin of stuff, and the entire bin was $5. So I basically paid less than a dollar for this locomotive. And uh, after testing it recently, I discovered that it unfortunately doesn't run. The light in the cabin turns on, but that's pretty much all it does. So it's clearly got some sort of an electrical issue, possibly a mechanical issue. I'm not entirely sure. But in any case, it clearly needs some work before it can be riding the rails once again. It is a sort of a unique addition to the collection though. This is actually a Brazilian locomotive and I don't own any other locomotives from Brazil. So that's uh, something going for it. And uh, it actually also has some Canadian history. They used this exact same type of locomotive on the London and Port Stanley Railroad, which eventually became CN. So you can find pictures of this same type of locomotive in both those paint schemes. Anyway, I think we're going to uh, take this thing over to the track. I'll show you all what it's doing right now, and then we'll crack it open. I have no idea who this engine is made by, but uh, hopefully there'll be some indicators on the inside. So I don't really know what I'm up against, but uh, we'll find out soon enough. So I'll just quickly plant this thing on the track so I can show you all exactly what it's doing right now. Last time uh, we were not hearing anything from the motor. However, the cabin light was turning on, so I'll give it some power. And just as before, you can see we got a nice bright light on the inside there, but uh, not hearing any humming or anything like that. So uh, we know that power is definitely getting inside the locomotive to some extent. The wheels are picking up power. There's no shorts because the cabin light's on, but there's no sound from the motor. So this likely means either a wire going to the motor is broken, or maybe one of the brushes on the motor itself is not doing its job. Uh, in some cases, you know, you'll have situations where you hear a motor humming that can usually mean it's seized and you don't want to force it to uh, try to go in those cases. But in this case, I just don't think the motor is getting any power. So we're going to bring this thing back over to the workbench and see if we can figure out why exactly that is. Since I don't know the make of this locomotive, I obviously have never opened one up before, but uh, I see two screws at each end. So I'm just going to try unscrewing both of those and hopefully it will all just open right up. All right, well, here we are inside. This is uh, an interesting design they got going here. They've just got a basic kind of circuit board to transfer the power to both the lights and possibly the motor. Pretty simple design. I can't say I've seen this type of motor before. I think it might be a three. It could be a five pole. I can't entirely tell right now. I don't know, that's a very unusual looking motor. But in any case, uh, this is very strange because we know that power is definitely getting to the lights. As I said before, the contacts are bringing power up to them. So there's something else that's wrong with this motor. I think the way it works is through uh, a ground system. So basically this frame carries half the power and then uh, wires pick up the other half and send it to the motor. So it could be a problem with that. Or it could be a problem with one of these two brushes. I'm not entirely sure which. This uh, right here looks very suspicious. I don't know. I guess a good way to find out is just to take some leads, connect them directly up to different spots on the locomotive and see if anything different happens. So now we're gonna find out if this motor works or not. To do this, I'm just gonna put a lead directly on that brush there, another one right there. And the motor seems to turn over just fine. So we know that the motor itself is not the problem. The brushes are doing their jobs just fine. The commutator is gonna need some cleaning, but I'm not terribly concerned about that right now. What I do wanna figure out is what exactly is causing the motor not to get power. So we could try a couple things. We could try removing this board and just seeing Anything's amiss there. I'm actually noticing right now that this motor seems very loose. That very well could be the problem. So it appears we've got a screw here and here. I think these hold the weight on and potentially also whatever powers the motor on the other side. So you know, we'll have a look down there. I think that that could be a good spot to look for problems.
This is so strange. Well, I was hoping uh, this was going to clarify how this whole thing worked, but uh, I gotta say, I think I'm even more confused because I don't really see a specific contact. We've got a piece of metal which connects onto this. And these are uh, both separate. I'm kind of thinking that it is this contact after all, and I'll tell you why. So you got your lower brush, which is right here, it connects to um, this metal frame right here, which you know eventually wraps around the entire motor. So theoretically, I guess those screws which are up here, this screw right here should transfer power to that. I guess there's always a possibility that it's not working correctly, but uh, that's one place to look. This uh, contact right here is also supposed to be touching that. There, are, This whole electrical system is not fantastic, to be completely honest. I guess we'll just put it back together and hope for the best. I think everything down here is fine. It's more uh, this whole system, which I'm a little more suspicious about. And as you can see, they're using nothing but the highest end self-tapping screws to hold the whole thing together. Starting to think that there was something wrong down here after all, because uh, I just made a bit of a discovery, which is that, you know, I wasn't 100% wrong about this whole theory as to how the motor's wired up, because you see if I apply power, it does start up. So, you know, I was right that this is isolated and this is all part of the same ground. But if uh, I put a wire directly on the frame of the uh, locomotive by connecting it up to the screw, and then I apply power up here, you can see the motor starts as well. But it's only if I tilt it forward, so something still doesn't seem quite right there. So it looks like I'm going to have to take that part off again. There are a couple of screws on the bottom of this, and I'm just kind of wondering if since this part is separate from the rest of the frame, if, you know, this might have become loose over time and maybe isn't doing its job as well as it once was. That one's nice and tight, but yeah, this one seems stripped because it's turning, but it's not becoming, uh, it's not torquing that down anymore. If these two screws don't even look like they're the same size. Maybe I'm not the first person to have opened this uh, locomotive up. Well, I got a simple solution. I just need to put this uh, kind of stubbier screw in on this side. Hopefully we'll be able to torque down the screw enough to uh, kind of connect that plate to the frame better. Maybe that will fix our problem. I don't know. If that's the case, it's pretty simple. Unfortunately, uh, that's not quite doing its job. Also, the screw is pretty much completely uh, stripped the threads. I went digging through my spare parts bin and I found uh, this thing right here. It's just a kind of miscellaneous screw. But it seems like it might be the right size to uh, kind of re-widen uh, the threads on this. You know, it's not a self-tapping screw or anything, but if we put enough pressure, it might just get the job done. So I think I'm going to put that plastic part back over this. Hopefully everything will fit together. And if we're lucky, this will fix the problem. I don't know. This is definitely one of the more strange designs I've seen and uh, definitely one of the most unusual problems I've encountered over the years. Yeah, it's tightening down, which is better than the other ones. I think we've done it, folks. So now I just need to put all this back together again, and hopefully the engine will run this time. And I hope that screw doesn't get in the way. This really is not a perfect fit. You know, optimally you'd want to find something uh, a little bit better with a bit of a smaller head. 
but uh, this is a dirt cheap engine and frankly I'm just trying to get it running again. Just as long as it fits fine it should perform the same anyway. Oh, that seems to have got her going again, so uh, now that that seems to be working pretty well, I think what we'll do is just uh, disassemble both these trucks, service them, because I imagine they're going to need new grease and everything else. Just turning this one manually and it seems a little off. So we'll fix that all up, we'll put the uh, drive linkages back in, and hopefully this uh, engine will run okay. Okay, that's how you take them out. Just pull it down. And out they come. Yeah, this design is just unreal. Well, the people that uh, built this engine, you know, it's certainly not the worst craftsmanship I've ever seen, but uh, were they ever stingy with the grease? Like, I don't see any oil whatsoever in this gearbox. It also looks suspiciously like uh, the old AHMs slash IHC. I don't know, maybe this was part of their design, or maybe it was a mimic. I really can't tell, because I still have no clue who made this engine. Hopefully somebody in the comments will know the make. Yeah, I'll just throw some oil in here. Everything is really clean though, which is nice to see. Yeah, if we tried to run this whole thing uh, dry, I can't imagine it would be a very quiet engine. Not that it's gonna be the best now, but throwing some oil in this thing is certainly not gonna hurt it, that's for sure. Throw uh, some oil on the worm gear there. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of grease, but this type of gearbox really doesn't need a whole lot just because this is all uh, nylon parts and, uh, and nylon's a very low friction material. So you really need a very thin oil to, uh, to go through here. You don't need super thick lubricant. Uh, if you were working with an engine with uh, lots of metal gears in it, I would recommend putting quite a bit of grease because in that case, you do have quite a bit of friction. It's not that middle gears are bad, it's just that they require a thicker oil. I can't tell if this is an anti-oxidization layer that they've put on here, or if this is oxidized metal, because you see parts like this are kind of shiny, but... Yeah, I don't know. I think this is these are brass parts which have oxidized, so I'm going to clean them up. Hopefully I'm not removing an important layer, but... Yeah, I don't think that that was supposed to be there.
Now that we've got this thing all installed back together, what I really want to focus on is the wheels. They're not horrible, but they definitely could be quite a bit better. So we're going to uh, hook up some wires to the wheels and then uh, just clean away, really. Well, I think we've pretty much done just about everything there is to do. I already uh, cleaned off the commutator and cleaned out the gaps a little bit. Things are looking pretty good for that. So I think at this point we can uh, seal the whole locomotive up and take it over to the track. Really, I'll just hope for the best. All right, folks, let's take it to the track. Well, I'm hoping after everything we've done on this thing that uh, it will run. Let's find out, moment of truth. It's, uh, it's even worse than it was before. Now we don't even have the light. Oh, never mind. Okay. Okay, this thing is really confusing. We just had reverse. Now we don't have reverse, but the headlight's on. Okay, now we got them both running. So I guess we've got a runner. I don't know. Something still seems a tiny bit off about the electrical system, but running pretty well. It's quite quiet. Current draw seems to be about in check. I think we can call this thing a runner. Serenity. Let's see if it will uh, start and stop again. Okay, well we got reverse that time, no problem. And we got forwards again. I think this thing just needed to break in a little bit. And just for kicks, we'll see what kind of low speed we've got. I uh, did confirm this engine has a three-pole motor, so yeah, it's not going to be the greatest. It's not stalling, but it is cogging pretty bad, so uh, it's running consistently, which is ultimately what matters. Well, I don't know what all of you think, but uh, I'm pretty happy with this locomotive at this point. I mean, we started off this episode with this thing... Uh, not really doing much of anything except uh, having a working light. So, yeah, now we've got a working light and a working locomotive. So, really no complaints there. Anyways, I think that's going to be about it. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.